Praise the Lord, uh, brothers and sisters. And uh, this is uh, Sammy Wilberforce with the Gospel Sounders Rekindling Reformation. And uh, I'm glad to continue in this series, the prophets and uh, the messengers. This is number 17 in this series. And uh, being uh, number five, uh, in these uh, presentations, an appeal to common sense. And uh, I'm looking at the example of Paul as um, we go through this uh, presentation. And so i like us to just thank the Lord for his mercies and giving us help as we go into this uh, presentation. Shall we uh, pray? Lord in heaven, the sovereign of all the universe, thank you for your grace upon us, unmerited favor upon uh, human beings. And Lord, how we pray that uh, this favor that has been given unto us, it may be not lost, but Lord, we may seek thee as thou art still found when the door of our probation still lingers upon our souls, that Lord, we may delight in uh, being refreshed by the Spirit in our daily lives. And so thank you for everything and guide us as we study together. In Christ Jesus' name, we beseech these things. Amen. And so I hope that uh, we are still learning and uh, we will continue learning together. And uh, the presence of God will continue guiding us into all truth. There is no... Um, problem with uh, investigating the truth and uh, coming to a point that we are in harmony and the watchmen in Israel see things uh, together. I'm going to look at uh, the example of Paul as uh, a, a laborer of uh, or a, a, a worker in the gospel vineyard. In the previous uh, presentation, I looked at uh, the system of Type thing and uh, benevolence. And uh, before I just look at the uh, at Paul as an uh, our example in uh, laboring for Christ, I like to look at uh, the qualifications of uh, the workers. How does a person become qualified for tight means paid means to work? Men and women in local churches are to go out and work for the Lord, as this is the duty of every Christian. But uh, some will be especially called of God to consecrate themselves to the ministry as full-time workers and uh, leave their works and depend wholly on um, uh, preaching the word of God. As they go out and prove themselves by the fruit of their labors, what should be sent from the local church to the conference concerning those who are doing a good work for the Lord and the conference should investigate to see if the person or Persons are truly qualified for tithe, paid, full-time work. And so it is up to the conference to examine the evidence and character of each candidate and to determine whether or not to hire a person under the tithe pay payroll. And uh, you may wonder why I have to say that. I'll come shortly to that and expound on it more. The exact details of what, qualif of, uh, what and who qualifies, what qualifies as a person may have to be learned uh, through the Bible and uh, through a talk with this person. It is only the Bible who can tell us those who are qualified, but also the um, uh, 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 an interview with this person may be uh, uh, a better way of uh, knowing if they are called of God. But the Bible is the basis of what makes us decide who is qualified. The better qualifying process, the more uh, that uh, we will not run into problems. Now, the Bible gives us a hint on how people are qualified for the ministry work. But the church also have a role to play in, uh, uh, in uh, knowing who are qualified. But I'll start with the Bible, the hints that it gives us to know people who are qualified to be laborers in the vineyard. Now, uh, in the Bible, while uh, Paul is writing to Timothy, this is what he says. 
in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3. Paul himself, who was a laborer in the vineyard, saith this. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. You see that? But then, he must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality. Not given to wine, not striker, not greedy or filthy looker, but patience, not a brawler, not covetous. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own office, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not doubt, double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy or filth lucre, holding the ministry of the faith in pure conscience. And let those uh, and uh, and let this also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderous, sober, faithful in all things. And uh, I'll be talking about the wives of the, the ministers, how they ought to be in the next presentation. We shall be looking at the wives of the ministers, what kind of wives they should be. So even so must their wives be grave, not slanderous, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own houses well. For they that have used the office of a deacon well, deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree and great boldness in their faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Um, these things I write unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. So, these people who are coming to be Bible workers, they should know the scriptures. They might be apt to teach. And then in uh, 2 Timothy 2.2, he adds something about these people. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, starting from 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. They should be able to teach others. And then he goes ahead and says a very uh, important point. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. So we are, look, we are seeing these are the qualifications of those who should be working in the vineyard of um, God. And uh, also Paul tells Timothy that um, these people uh, in the book of uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5 that uh, uh, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture saith, thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treaded out the corn, and the laborer is worth of his reward. And so also there should be people who rule well. And uh, as we see, there should be people who can labor, who are able to labor in the word and the doctrine. Then they, they must be presented before the people and then um, the church and the church examine them and they should be uh, 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 qualified or should be a uh, uh, commission to work uh, for the Lord. Also in the book of Titus, there's something uh, Paul tells um, Titus, for this cause I left thee, I thee in Crete that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city as I have appointed thee. 
if any be blameless, the husband of one wife having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, uh, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a love of good men, sober, just holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. So these are the qualification of those who should be ordained to be in charge of churches. They should be able to teach and they should be able to be temperate in uh, 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 or all things. And uh, uh, we are told that a minister should not strive. A minister should not be a person who strive. The servant of God uh, should um, should not uh, sorry strive. And uh, this is in Second Timothy chapter two verses twenty four. Second Timothy chapter two verses twenty four. We are looking at the qualification of those who can be uh, uh, ordained in the house of the Lord and work as gospel ministers. He tells them those who are presenting themselves that uh, nevertheless the foundation of God standeth sure having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If any man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness with faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned question avoid knowing that they do gender strife. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men up to teach and patient in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the, no, to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him uh, by Him at his will. And so this, these are the qualifications we are seeing that the servants of the Lord should have. In, uh, in the book of Revelation, we are told that the church should try them uh, in the in the book of Revelation, uh, verse, chapter 2, verse 9, we are told, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jewish and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Now, uh, there, there, are, uh, there are those who call themselves the Jewish, or there are those who call themselves the servants, but they are not. And uh, that is what I wanted you uh, to see, that um, God tries people to see if they are what they say they are, yet he is the one that also finds they are not. But also the church has a responsibility. Uh, we are told you have tried them that say um, they are apostles, but they are not. In the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verses. In the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verses 2, the church has a responsibility to test those who are saying they are servants and they are not. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars. Now, you know, in church, we have different gifts which qualifies some to be supported by the type. And somebody will say you cannot try a prophet, you cannot try an evangelist, you cannot try a, 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 an apostle. Yet you can try an elder and pastor because these are offices which people are appointed to by the people. But the office of an evangelist, a prophet, and uh, an apostle, they are offices which God ordains people into them. And so we have heard people say, you know, 
who are you a mere church member to try and test those who are sent by God, the evangelists, prophets, and apostles. But the Bible is clear that the church can be able to test these people. I know thy works and thy labor, talking to the to the angel of the church of Ephesus, and how thou cannot bear them which are evil. And thou hast pride them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them liars. So the church can try those who present themselves that they are apostles. And the church, using the Bible, they can ascertain these are the people of God or they are not sent of God. Now, why should we be able to have this gospel order and not those who qualify says, to work for the Lord and be supported by the type? In the book, Ministry of Healing, I'll just take you there. Uh, in the book, Ministry of Healing, page 100, in the book, uh, Early Writing, sorry, page 100. Now, I want just to read this. It is somewhat long, but uh, I like to read it in our hearing from page uh, 97.2 going downwards. We are looking at who qualifies. We have looked at the Bible who qualifies. We have looked how we can try them. And we want to look at how E.G. White says about gospel order and uh, making sure that we have it. And we set people uh, at liberty to work for the Lord after trying them. Men whose lives are not holy and who are unqualified to teach the present truth enter the field without being acknowledged by the church or brethren generally. So we saw that uh, anyone who presents himself to be a worker should be able to present truth, teach it, and defend it, and be able to defend it. And so she says that others enter into the field who cannot be able to defend the truth, and they enter it without the acknowledgement of the church or the brethren general, which means that the church has a duty, uh, and the brethren has a duty to acknowledge those who are presenting themselves as workers. And confusion and disunion are the result when these people enter the field. Some have a theory of the truth and can present the argument but lacks spirituality, judgment, and experience. They fail in many things which it is very necessary for them to understand before they can teach the truth. So the fact that you understand a truth does not qualify you to teach it. You must um, uh, uh, have an experience in understanding that truth. Others have not the argument, but because of few brethren here, they pray well and give an exciting exhortation. Now and then they are pressed into the field to engage in a work for which God has not qualified them and for which they have not sufficient experience and judgment. Spiritual pride comes in, they are lifted up and act under the deception of thinking that they are laborers. They do not know themselves. They lack sound judgment and patient reasoning, talk boastingly of themselves and assert many things which they cannot prove from the word. God knows this, therefore he does not call such a to labor in these perilous times. And brethren should be careful not to push those out into the field whom he has not called. Those men who are not called of God are generally the very ones that are the most confident that they are so called and that their laborers are very important. They go into the field and do not generally exert a good influence, yet in some places they have a measure of success, and this leads them and others to think that they are surely called of God. It is not a positive evidence that men are called of God because they have some success, for angels of God are now moving upon the hearts of his honest children to enlighten their understanding as to the present truth that they may lay hold upon it and live. And even, and even if self-send men put themselves where God does not put them and profess to be teachers, and souls receives the truth by hearing them talk it, this is no evidence that they are called of God. The souls who receive the truth from them receive it to be brought into trial and bondage as they afterward find that these men were not standing in the counsel of God. Even if wicked men talk the truth, some may receive it, but it does not bring those who talk it into any more favor with God. Wicked men are wicked men still, and according to the deception they practiced upon those who are beloved of God, and according to the confusion brought in into the church, so will be their punishment, 
their sins will not remain covered but will be exposed in the day of God's fierce anger. Continued on, these self-sent messengers are a curse to the cause. Honest souls put confidence in them, thinking that they are moving in the counsel of God and they are in union with the church and therefore suffer them to administer the ordinances. And as duty is made plain that they must do their first works, allow themselves to be baptized by them. But when light comes, as it surely will, and they are aware that these men are not what they understood them to be, God's call and chosen messengers, they are thrown into trial and doubt as to the truth they have received and feel that they must learn it all over again. They are troubled and perplexed by the enemy about all they experience, whether God has led them or not, and are not satisfied until they are again baptized and begin anew. It is much more wearing to the spirits of God's messengers to go into places where those uh, have been who have exerted this wrong influence than to enter new fields. God's servants have to deal plainly and act openly and not cover up wrongs, for they are standing between the living and the dead and must render an account of their faithfulness, their mission, and the influence they exert over the flock of which the Lord has um, made them overseers. So, if men who are not called by God go somewhere and have success and baptize the people, and later the people find that these were not sent by God, those congregations are thrown into perplexity and new laborers going to that field to labor is a tenfold harder work because now these people have lost confidence in those people who call themselves ministers. And now trusting again them become a whole new thing. And when they found that the experience has not been a true experience, they doubt this experience and then they again have to be baptized and start all over. And it's a, a will upon a will which God has not made, but which Satan has ensnared them into. Continued on on those who qualify says and how we are to act upon them. Those who receive the truth and are brought, are brought into such a trial will have had the truth the same if these men had stayed away and filled the humble place the Lord designed them. God's eye was upon his jewels and he will have directed them to them, his call and chosen messengers, men who will have moved understandingly. Men, uh, the light of truth will have shown and discovered to these souls their true position, and they will have received the truth understandingly and been satisfied with its beauty and clearness. But because these messengers who are not sent by God has gone to those fields and did a work, really it has been a very difficult job for those whom they ministered unto. And as they failed, it is powerful effects they will have been strong and shared a holy influence. If true ministers had gone to that field, it could have had a powerful effect, and these people who, are, who, who could have been converted would have had strong, would have been strong and shared a holy influence. But now they are weak because those who led them into truth were not sent by God, but were self-sent messengers. And so he says again, the danger of those traveling whom God has not called was shown me. If they do have some success, the qualifications that are lacking will be felt. In judicious moves will be made, and by a lack of wisdom, some precious souls may be driven where they can never be reached. I saw that the church should feel their responsibility and should look carefully and attentively at the lives, qualifications, and general course of those who profess to be teachers. If unmistakable evidence is not given that God has called them and that the who is upon them if they heed not this call, it is the duty of the church to act and let it be known that these persons are not acknowledged as teachers by the church. This is the only course the church can take in order to be clear in this matter, for the burden lies upon them. I saw that this door at which the enemy comes in to perplex and trouble the flock can be shut. I inquired of the angel how it could be closed. He said the church must flee to God's word and become established upon gospel order which has been overlooked and neglected. This is indispensable, necessary in order to bring the church into the unity of the faith. I saw that in the apostles' day, the church was in danger of being deceived and imposed upon by false teachers. Therefore, the brethren chose men who had given good evidence that they were capable of ruling well their own house and preserving order in their own families, and who could enlighten those who are in darkness. Inquiry was made of God concerning this, 
And then according to the mind of the church and the Holy Ghost, they were set apart by the laying on of hands. Having received their commission from God and having the approbation of the church, they went forth baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and administering the ordinances of the Lord's house, often waiting upon the saints by presenting them the emblems of the broken body and split blood of the crucified Savior to keep fresh in the memory of God's beloved children, his suffering and his death. I saw that uh, we are no more secure from false teachers now than they were in the apostles' days. And if we do no more, we should take as, as special measures as they did to secure the peace, harmony, and union of the flock. We have the example and should follow it. Brethren of experience and of sound mind should assemble, and following the word of God and the sanction of the Holy Spirit should, with fervent prayer, lay hands upon those who have given full proof that they have received they have received their commission of God and set them apart to devote themselves and tell to his work. This act will show the sanction of the church to their going forth as messengers to carry the most solemn messages uh, ever given to men. God will not entrust the care of his precious flock to men whose mind and judgment have been weakened by former errors that they have cherished, such as the so-called perfectionism and spiritualism, and who by their course while in these errors have disappeared disgraced themselves and brought reproach upon the cause of truth. Although they may now feel free from error and competent to go forth and to teach this last message, God will not accept them. He will not entrust precious souls to their care, for their judgment was perverted while in error and is now weakened. The great and holy one is a jealous God, and he will have holy men to carry his truth. The holy law spoken by God from Sinai is as is a part of himself and holy men who are its strict observers will alone honor him by teaching other, it to others. The servants of God who teach the truth should be men of judgment. They should be men who can bear opposition and not get excited. For those who oppose the truth will pick at those who teach it, and every objection that can be produced will be brought in its worst form to bear again against the truth. The servants of God who bear the message must be prepared to move these objections with calmness and meekness by their light of truth. Frequently, opposers talk to ministers of God in a provoking manner to call out something from them of the same nature that they can make as much of it as possible and declare to others that the teachers of the commandments have a bitter spirit and are harsh as has been reported. I saw that we must be prepared for objections and with patience, judgment, and meekness, let them have the weight they deserve, not throw them away or dispose of them by positive assertions, and then bear down upon the objector and manifest a hard spirit toward him. But give the objections their weight, then bring forth the light and the power of the truth, and let it outweigh and remove the errors. Thus, a good impression will be made and honest opposers will acknowledge that they have been deceived and that the commandment keepers are not what they have been represented to be. Those who profess to be servants of the living God must be willing to be servants of all. Instead of being exalted above the brethren, and they must possess a kind, courteous spirit. If they err, they should be ready to confess thoroughly. Honesty of intention cannot stand as an excuse for not confessing errors. Confession will not lessen the confidence of the church in the messenger, and he will set a good example as spirit confession will be encouraged in the church and sweet union will be the result. Those who profess to be teachers should be patterns of piety, meekness, and humility, possessing a kind spirit to win souls to Jesus and the truth of the Bible. A minister of Christ should be pure in conversation and in actions. He should ever bear in mind that he is handling words of inspiration words of a holy God. He must also bear in mind that the flock is entrusted to his care and that he is to bear their cases to Jesus and plead for them as Jesus pleads for us with the Father. I was pointed back to the children of Israel anciently and saw how pure and holy the ministers of the sanctuary had to be because they were brought by their work into a close connection with God. They, that minister, must be holy, pure, and without blemish, or God will destroy them. God has not changed. He is just as holy and pure, just as particular as he ever was. Those who profess to be the ministers of Jesus should be men of experience and deep piety, and then at all times and in all places they can shed a holy influence. 
I have seen that it is now time for the messengers to move out wherever there is an opening and that God will go before them and open the hearts of some to hear. New places must be entered and wherever this is done, it will be well if consistent to go to and to so as to hold up each other's hands. A plan like this was presented. It will be well for two brethren to start together and travel in company to the darkest places where there is much opposition and where the most labor is needed and with united efforts and strong faith set the truth before those in darkness. And then if they could accomplish more by visiting many places to go separately but often meet while on the tour to encourage each other by their faith and thereby strengthen and hold up each other's hands. Also let them consult upon, um, also let them do what? Consult upon the places open for them um, and decide which of their gifts will be the most needed and in that, in what they can have the most success in reaching the heart. Then as they separate again, their courage and energy will be renewed to meet the opposition and darkness and to labor with feelings, filling hearts to save perishing souls. I saw that the servants of God should not go over and over the same field of labor, but should be searching out souls in new places. Those who are already established in the truth should not demand uh, some, should not demand so much of their labor, for they ought to be able to stand alone and strengthen others about them while the messengers of God visit the dark and lonely places, setting the truth before those who are not now enlightened as to the present truth. And so we see also what um, the spirit of prophecy says that uh, uh, should be the qualification of those uh, 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 who are uh, presenting themselves uh, for uh, uh, for 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 labor. Now. There is those who present themselves for, uh, for for those who present themselves as um, uh, qualified to 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 go into working into the field. There are many who present themselves that uh, they are qualified to go into the fields to present the word of God. But then you look at. Um, their experience and uh, how they are laboring and uh, you find that uh, really they are not qualified and i want to show one instance of this where actually um I want to show an example of ministers who present themselves that they are qualified to go into the field when indeed they are not qualified. Those who present themselves that um, they are qualified to go into the field when um, they are not really qualified. There, there are many and uh, the inspiration gives us an example of uh, these people. Now, allow me again to just share this of those who present themselves that uh, they are laborers in the vineyard, but they cannot really uh, they are not really qualified. A pastor without experience and not able to defend the truth. Look at this. Elder Tani has not an experience that qualifies him to be a pastor. This is a large church and unless help comes, I know not how they will become a, li a live, healthful church. Should opposing ministers attack the Sabbath keeper, there is not a man whom we will dare have stand in defense of the truth. Elder Daniels will do the best, but he lacks in some things. Elder Corliss will be held heartily welcomed here, I think, by all. I have not exchanged a word with Willie, but I am sometimes sorry that when he, he was so honest to come, he was not allowed to come. There is not a man here that 
has the knowledge that is necessary upon the general workings of the course and that with intelligence can communicate what he does know. So this is an elder who has presented himself to be a pastor, but we are told that he cannot take care of this church, large church, because he cannot defend the truth when the Sabbath keepers are attacked. What do your passing resolution amount to? Verily nothing. You do not act or carry out one-tenth of them. What do your missional meetings accomplish? Verily nothing. You have a form, but your meetings are dying a natural death for want of wise generalship to set things in motion and keep things working. Reaching one line of work after another and making everyone feel that he has something to do. I'm not able to visit. I wish I were. And so this is a church that had a pastor, but it is meetings after meetings and nothing is being accomplished. And nothing is being set in motion. And so we are told, Elder Tani visited me yesterday. I promised to speak Sabbath. He spoke of the two last meetings in which I spoke and said there, were no, there was no question with anyone came the testimony to the church. He said many felt deeply, but they inquired, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? I was glad to hear Brother Chen say what he did, for I feared he thought I was setting things home too closely. He says many were affected deeply, but they need someone to particularly instruct them how to find Jesus, their personal savior, and he cannot do this. Remember, he is a pastor, he is an elder, and the church is crying for somebody who can really instruct them to find Jesus, yet he cannot. So this person was not fit to be in charge of, uh, 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 of this church. And fit elder and a burden, burden, a burden to wife and the church. Look at this also. The church in Adelaide are so much in the dark under such a spiritual instruction that they cannot see the difficulties. They are glad to have one who can preach. Some who, some, some who are spiritual see these things as they are and see that the church is weakened without spirituality. Did our people send Elder Curtis here to get rid of him? Many, may the Lord forgive them if they did. He married one of our mission girls, an excellent woman. She loves her husband. He had three children. Uh, by his first wife, one is deficient in mental ability. These children are coarse and rude, but the man could not or did not reason that this was sufficient burden for the delicate, finely organized new wife. But as fast as possible, two children and then several others, I learned. But the vitality of the frail wife was not enough and she did not carry them her full time. But, uh, and if he has no more wisdom in management, the church than in his own family, the Lord pity the poor child. The man now has five children to support and what a care, what a burden for the wife to be left with this care. She never complains. They say she is meek and patient, but I have strong indignation against such a man. I do not think he should remain in this country. He molds the church to do nothing. So this is an elder and an evangelist sent in the field. And what he does is increase children after children he cannot take care of them. They are rude and they are coarse. And this influence of his family is making him unfit for the church. For the only influence that church can have is uh, uh, an influence which is not right. And so E.G. White says that he is not a person that should have been sent in this place. Again, it's uh, and uh, we read of another minister. A minister has been sustained here in Adelaide endorsed by Melbourne Conference, sent by the General Conference, whose teachings have confused minds. This education and training has placed a mold upon the work which demands close, honest, persevering labor to counteract. I cannot do this, but someone must do it. So again, here is somebody sent in the field who is teaching error and is confusing the church. And E.G. White says, the conference approved it, the General Conference approved it, but I think this should have not been the case. And we find people who are being sent somewhere which have a lot of errors, but yet we say that maybe he will relinquish these errors. This should not be the case. We are looking at the qualification of those who should be sent to the field and an example of Paul. And why say an example of Paul? Although Paul was eloquent and knew a lot, he was not just thrown to the field to work. He was brought before the brethren and after being brought before the brethren, 
he was able to be endorsed and sent forth with the church uh, to go and labor. He, he did not see that because I'm so qualified, because as I know so much and I was called by God direct, then I should go laboring without counseling with brethren. He was brought before the brethren, they prayed for him, and then he was sent to the field. So we are looking at the qualification and an example of Paul, that um, even after being called by God, he met the church and they sent him out. And so continued on, on those who are not, should not be sent out. It is these thoughts that distress me and wear me, that our general conference should make such unwise moves as have been made in sending Elder Curtis here to Australia, and that the conference in Australia should not have examined his work and changed this order of things. You know, we, we talked earlier about that the church should prove them who are presenting themselves as laborers. Revelation chapter 2, verses 2. The neglect of doing that which was manifestly the duty of someone to do has left a burden on this conference to be especially liberal in doing a work. Now to redeem the past and make, as far as in their power, restitution for the past neglect. Elder Curtis is supposed to have the endorsement of the conference and thus leaves a guilt upon the conference for sustaining a man who has remiss in his duty and faithful to his charge, giving lessons in dealing with the supposed erring contrary to the Bible rule, which now have to be counteracted and an entirely different mold given to the church. This business is to me a sad and sorrowful one, and it is not a feeble effort or short work that can make a sufficient change and leave a helpful, wholesome influence in the church, which will be abiding. So, unqualified ministers not to be sent to the field. It is not automatic that a preacher is also an evangelist. She continues to say, there are individuals that can exhort and pray with a degree of freedom in conference meetings. This is well. Just such ones are needed in the church, but they may lack the essential qualifications for laborers in the vineyard of the Lord. Let them fill their place in the church, but push them not into a work they do not understand and that they have no experience in. These things discourage the church. They interest themselves to help such ones and then see no fruit of their labor. I cannot be very much surprised that there is a, a disposition one to send out ministers from their own country when I see by revelation of the Spirit of the Lord, the great defects and want of wisdom among those who have come from America. Elder Israel is not a preacher and is very narrow in his ideas. Elder Corliss and Elder Israel did not draw in even courts. This left a wrong mold upon the work. Brother Scott, in the publishing house, managed so as to keep everything in his own hands as was afraid to have others get a hold in the work. And these working apart elements have kept things here in a sad condition. Brother Curtis was sent here from America, but he has not, he, he, he was not the man they needed. They should not be in America so wanting in understanding as to send such a man as Elder Curtis. He preaches to the people, but makes no after effort to follow up the sermons given. He said he could, he said he could not visit families and that he just despised the kind of labor. Now this is hold on. This is an elder speaking and a pastor. He has been sent to the field to work, and he says he cannot visit the families after the sermon, and he despises such a kind of labor. And the conference sent him out. He is being paid tight, and he is being sustained by the church. And here is another elder increasing in children, and he has rude children and coarse children, and the influence he is exerting to other youths is not good, but the conference says that these are the laborers that we have. I, I want us to think about that uh, for a moment. She says, the work which the church has would have done, they have left it to another to do. The, the work of examining those who present themselves as the teachers of the word. And so uh, a hard work has been done in this field that it is not simple to counteract it. Others have been sent there. The only thing they are doing is teaching error and somebody to undo it. 
he says that Daniel cannot even do it. And to some extent, Corlys can do it, but we need able defenders of the truth in this field if something will be accomplished in this field. Again, uh, continuing on, you can imagine the condition of a flock unvisited by the shepherd. I have repeatedly had this matter presented before me that these men who are ordained to preach the word should be educated to make full proof of their ministry in their personal labor, labors in families, talking with the members of the family, understanding their spiritual condition, encouraging, reproving with all long suffering and doctrine, praying with them, binding up his interest with their heart and souls. This is the work of a faithful shepherd. But there has been solemn duties neglected in accepting ministers to labor in word and doctrine who can only preach. They do not watch for souls as they that they should give an account. They summonize, but the work is left undone which the sheep and lambs need to have done for them. And this half kind of work has been done all through America and wages paid to men, to the men employed when if they were dismissed and let them find work less responsible and caretaking. So she says that uh, these men could have been relieved of their work long time ago and found another employment. In sending men to foreign field, let there be great caution used. Those who have been accepted as preachers in America and have not been educated to watch for souls as they must give an account are not the men to enter new fields as missionaries. If there is any corner of the world where the churches can be built up and kept in prosperous condition by summonizing, while they neglect personal labor, I have yet to learn this, that there is no field where only people need summons, but not personal labor. And these people who present themselves as gospel ministers, all they can do is summonize, but they cannot do personal labor, they cannot teach, they cannot defend the truth. Men who are accepted to preach and not to minister better not go into foreign countries. Better have one thorough shepherd who will care for the flock as a faithful shepherd, should than to have 20 summonizers who will excuse themselves saying it is not in my line to visit i cannot visit the church in their families then let there not be a moment's hesitation in telling them we do not propose to accept you and give you credentials you cannot labor but educate yourself to do a shepherd's work to care for the sheep and lambs and you will not be like ephraim a cake and turned Hosea 7 8, you will give full proof of your ministry. Those who can only preach are not missionaries and never can be until they learn the skill, the watchful, tender compassion of a shepherd. And as just we bring this to some summary, the flock of God have a right to expect to be visited by their pastor, to be instructed, advised, counseled in their own homes. And if a man fails to do this part of the work, he cannot be a minister af after God's order. Well, Brother Hay is this kind of a preacher. A preacher of what? He can only preach. He cannot visit the family. Brother Curtis is this kind of a missionary. And the churches that have such a labor are disorganized, weak and sickly and ready to die. The sermons are not vitalized by the Spirit of God because the blessing of God will not rest upon any man who is neglecting the flock of God. It is the labor, it is in the labor out of the pulpit among families that the richest and most valuable experience is gained, that the minister learns how he can feed the flock of God, giving to each his portion of meat in due season. If there is a backslider, the shepherd knows how to present the truth in such a manner that the soul will be convicted. We will leave the 90 and 90, the 90 and 9, and seek the lost sheep. But if the shepherd does not visit his flock, he knows not their condition, he knows not what truth to set before them, which is appropriate to their case. And more than this, as the preacher manifests so little interest in the souls under his charge, he cannot set an example to the flock to have an interest in love and watch care for souls. Everything is at loose ends. His work is strongly mixed with self and is not bound up, but left to ravel out. And because of this neglect you often hear, I do not have success in bringing souls into the church. So these ministers are only summonizers and they cannot bring new people into the church because they don't have those qualifications. 
he says, and you hear them say that uh, I have not had success. How will you have success if you are not going out, if you are not sending yourself out of the comfort zone? Um, we continue on. The Lord cannot work for those who are unfaithful, who neglect their manifest duty. The most important of part of part of a shepherd's duty. Should the Lord move upon the hearts of the sinners and they become converted, who will watch for them as one who must give an account? Who will visit them? Who will strengthen the deceased and the feeble ones? The truth, if presented to those of our faith and outsiders, should be as it is in Jesus. See with what love, tender, sympathy, and perseverance he labored. His work was done after this order. He will not fail, nor be discouraged, Isaiah 42 form. This spirit should be with all the laborers. Better, far better have less preachers and far more honest, humble, God-fearing workers. We are laborers together with God. Now, it is highly essential in this field that men are the right kind of laborers, for they are molding the churches to do as the preacher does. They feel it is the right way to have just a little interest in the prosperity of their brethren and sisters in the church as their minister has given them an example in their way of laboring. So if a minister do not have the spirit of visitation, teaching, and defending the truth, that is how the church will be molded. You will have people who are weakling, people who are not a missionary oriented, people who do not have the medical missionary spirit of taking care of the flock of God. And such a mold, when it is passed to the church, you have a dead church and not a living church because the church was established for missionary work. Again, they may raise up churches. I'm here. They may raise up churches, but they will always be weak and inefficient and unreliable. Such a kind of work at such an expense will not pay. Now, uh, lastly, she says, now I wish Brother Curtis were called out of this field. I do not think he has an idea of changing his manner of laboring. After they have become died in the wool, it is not easy to transform such a man. As lack shiftless, irresponsible shepherd will lose more sheep than he will gather in. The state of things in Adelaide is truly deplorable. It will require more honest labor to counteract the mold given to that people organized into a church than to raise up new churches for the members seem to have no right and just ideas of doing anything or bearing any responsibilities in building up a healthful, grown church. If there are good, sensible men who can speak the words of life and then follow up their labor with personal instruction, they are needed here. That is a long letter. You can read it, letter 50, 1892. Now, one more point. Uh, Look at this. Uh, I just want to give you one more point in Spalding and Magan, page 437.3. Uh, Spalding and Magan, about these laborers that are sent in the field that are not qualified. You see that uh, this elder is not doing anything in visitation. He cannot defend the truth. And he is a pastor also. If Sabbath keepers are attacked, there is no one that can stand for the truth. And the others that are working with him, there is only the increase of children. He cannot keep the children in order. And so the influence of the children are a wrong influence and a wrong mold to the other children in the church. Remember, in the next presentation, I'll be looking at the wife of these ministers, both uh, 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 those sanctified and unsanctified, what kind of uh, wives are, are they and what kind of wives should the ministers have? So the last point I want to make and then read a verse is this. These ministers, they are receiving wages, but they have no souls, wages without soul. There is, there is a need, there is need of a great reformation in our ranks. The ministers who are drawing pay from the conference need to ask themselves the question, Am I a faithful worker? Am I a spiritual help to the church? There are those who demand high wages for their labors, but who bring new, but who bring few souls into the truth to stand steadfast and true to its principles. 
it is time for our ministers to humbly to humble their hearts before the Lord and bear a straight convincing testimony to the people. It's a time for them to labor earnestly to increase the membership of the churches, leading all to a thorough understanding of the truth for this time. The Lord wants living members in his church, men and women who will encourage one another in faithful uh, uh, service. This is SPM 47.3. And so these are the qualifications that we need in the gospel workers. And, you know, Peter himself, when Jesus called him, he told him, go feed the sheep. Go feed the lamb. And when you have the shepherd who cannot do this and do visitation, have no souls on his belt, can only summonize but not defend the truth, then the church will stagnate and the church will not have a, uh, a missional spirit. And so Peter, Paul at last has this to tell us in uh, 2 Corinthians in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, Paul have this to say, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we fail not. But we have, but have renowned the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. But... Um, manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, the life, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken, we also believe, and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. And he says, For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might, through the thanksgiving of many, redound to the glory of God. For which cause we fail not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction which is but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding and ex eternal weight of glory while we look unto the things which are seen but at the things which why we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal and that that is paul for you speaking about his ministry we have seen the qualifications of the workers and we are seeing the admonition of Paul himself that this is the ministry he is involved in. Although it has much suffering, but he is not discouraged by this. He looks at the future glory to be of more essence than the affliction he is suffering today. How many ministers will take the example of Paul? And I'll be speaking more about this Paul when we come in working in um, uh, 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 hard fields. I'll repeat this chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, just to show you how Paul was able to endure the trials that he faced. And uh, the, the last verse, we can read this uh, about the ministers. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, our last verse says, Let a man 
saw account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. And so, the ministers of God, the servants of God, are stewards of the mysteries of God. And they should be faithful, diligent to execute these mysteries that they have been given. And so, brothers and sisters, I'll just urge us that uh, we look into this much more. Rather than just throwing people on the field to do the work, let us do our responsibility as a church, as we have been told in Revelation 2, to examine those who are presenting themselves as apostles and servants of the Lord and try them and see if they are really qualified. The qualification is there in the book of 2 Timothy. It is there in the book of uh, Titus. And even we have not looked at the women who should be laboring in the church. They need to be faithful men. And this is something that I was just forgetting, but I cannot pass it like that. In uh, Titus chapter 2, sorry, this, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. These are the mysteries of God, and we should be faithful about them. That the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women likewise, that they may be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much one, teachers of good things that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keep us at home, good, obedient to their own husband, that the word of God be not be blasphemed. And in the next presentation, I'll be looking at the wives of the ministers and revisit Titus chapter 2. Otherwise, God bless us. Let us not pass judgment on somebody, but also let us not neglect our duty to examine those who present themselves to be ministers. They must rule well their family. They must have a good report. They must be uh, 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 um, thoroughly directing their children. They must not be just sermonizers, but people who are teachers, defenders of the truth, and people who love to visit the church members and pass a missionary spirit to church members. Otherwise, the Lord bless us. And uh, I know we shall continue learning. Every day there's something new to learn and to correct those things which are not in order. Gospel order and organization will solve these perplexities we have. It has been neglected, but God is calling us back to it as even we near the end time. Otherwise, shall we uh, pray? Shall we pray? Father, thank you once again that uh, every time you speak unto us, it is not condemnation but uh, a word of revival and reformation. For you have not given unto us the ministry of condemnation, but a ministry of reconciliation. We can partake of the grace of Christ as a high priest and be priest here on earth by doing the same work he's doing, reconciling the people unto thyself. And so whatever we have thrown the churches in perplexity, taught error, sent ministers who cannot defend the truth, Forgive us, Lord, and help us to be established in gospel order and do the things that we have neglected to do, which are so essential for such a time as this. Be merciful unto us and uh, guide us in these end times. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you as you continue studying his word. And uh, bye for now until the next uh, presentation in this series.